as you can see the paint on this car is shot and whether it be where you're going to flip a car or you're just going to keep it for yourself this is really going to change up the value of the car and can give off that potential junk car look right off the bat so in this video we're going to be fixing exactly that i'm going to show you how to take the car from looking all busted and beat down because of bad paint like that to something that you could show off without any embarrassment and the best part about it is you can do this completely from home you don't even need to have a garage just like me you could be doing this completely from the street and it could be done for under a hundred dollars What's up, my name is Jamal from Flipping University. In this channel, I help people that might not have too much mechanical experience go from amateur to expert so that they can build a life of freedom, doing whatever they want, whenever they want. And I mentioned it in one of my last videos, but this is a car that I'm actually gonna be flipping. And I really didn't need to do the paint work for it just because I'm basically gonna be selling it as a really cheap car, which wouldn't change the value of the car too much, even if I didn't do this. But because someone asked for it in the comments, here you go. Now before we get into any type of work, the first thing that you really have to do is you have to find out exactly how bad the paint is damaged. And for this, we're just gonna do a very quick and simple test. Now all I have right here is just a flask with some good water. First, I'm just gonna take a quick sip. Man, that's good water. <laughs> but the next thing is we're also gonna pour this onto the paint. And let's take a look at what happens. So this is gonna go one of two ways if you do this yourself. If after you pour the water on the car, it basically looks like it's brand new again, you can't see any imperfections, then usually that would mean that it's just a clear coat that's messed up. And generally, if it is just a clear coat, it's an easier and a cheaper fix. If it's looking like this and you can still see the imperfections, then generally that would mean that it's not just a clear coat, it's also the base paint that's messed up as well. And since that's the situation that we have here, that's what we're gonna be working with today. I just wanna mention one thing, and that's kinda of highlighting what I said in the beginning of the video. First of all, that we're gonna be doing this outside, so there's certain things that we're gonna be doing in this video that would be a little bit different if you were doing this inside, whether it be in a garage or a paint booth or something like that. And this is also a cheap way to do things as well. So if you were doing this for a car that's more expensive or you want it to look a lot better, then I wouldn't follow the things I'm gonna be doing in this video. But this is things to do if you're on a budget, you have a car that's maybe kind of cheap, and you just want things to look a little bit better, but maybe not perfect. Because again, if it is perfect, realistically, it's not only gonna take more money, but it's also gonna take a lot more time. But okay, now that we're done with the disclaimers, let's get to the whole process. So before anything else, we have to clean this thing up. Of course, you can't have all this dirt and grime and residue as we're about to start getting along with the process. So to clean it, generally what I would use is, is just some isopropyl alcohol. Usually I'd get 70%. This is a very cheap thing. First of all, you might have it yourself already. And it's gonna be really effective for just taking away all the dirt, grime, and oils on top of the car. And as you can see, I'm just gonna be applying it to this microfiber towel. All right, so let's just get it over this whole thing. Make sure it's nice and clean. Okay, now that we got it all cleaned up, the next thing and probably one of the most important things before painting anything is sanding the car down. Most people already know this, but if you just paint over, especially metal without sanding it down, the paint's probably not gonna stick on for too long. Before we sand it down, we're just going to tape off the edges just so that we don't sand onto the next panels as well. So whatever panel you're gonna be doing, just try to tape around those edges before anything else. And for that, you could just use any painter's tape. And boom, there we go, I taped off both sides. I'm going to leave this bottom half just because realistically when I'm sanding, I'm not gonna end up hitting the bottom as well. And that also brings me to another point, which is just when you are painting any portion of the car, if you're not painting the whole car and you're just doing some type of patchwork like this, you should try to do it in some type of section that's cut off by some type of body line. Of course, with this, as you can see, I have the trunk right here, so the body line right here is going to make it a lot harder to tell which is old paint, which is on this panel here, and then which is new paint. But let's go on to the next part. And as I mentioned before, that's just gonna be sanding it down. And to sand it down, you're generally gonna use anything from 600 to 800 grit sandpaper. I'm using 800 here, but either is really fine. And this should sand it down enough to where it's gonna take off the top layer of the paint, but it's not gonna ship it all the way down to bare metal, let's say if it was like 100 grit sandpaper. And now just to make things a little bit easier for ourselves, we're also gonna be using a sponge just to put the sandpaper around. It's just gonna make it a lot easier to hold when I'm sanding everything down. All right, so now we're gonna use this, go over the whole thing. 
and this is where we get some good working out in for the day and by the way with this too we're just going to be using it dry we're not going to be doing a wet sand if we did a wet sand with this of course it wouldn't be as much abrasion we want to get it to the point where it's a nice soft even texture along everything and everything basically just feels smooth and has the same level but let's get to it Okay, I just finished up sanding everything down. As you can see, I'm looking pretty dirty too. But now that everything is all sanded down, we're gonna use a different microfiber towel, some more alcohol, and clean it up again. We can't have the paint that we just sanded over just sitting over the panel. So we're just gonna do the same thing, get some alcohol in there, and clean it off again. And now we're gonna move on to the next step before we go into painting everything. And of course, that's just masking everything off. If you do it without masking everything off, then the paint, as you know it, is just gonna get all over the place, possibly hitting other body panels and stuff too. And we don't want that. So we're just gonna use these black trash bags and then the same masking tape that we used before. And of course, you don't have to use garbage bags. You could use other things. Generally, plastic things would be best to just keep the paint away but I'm just gonna use these scissors and just cut out the inside of the bag just so that it spreads out more. And there we go, now I cut it into two, just so it could cover a bigger area. And you don't have to be wasting as much bags. Good way to do it if you're doing this by yourself is just taping it so that the outside edge is still up so that I can leave some space for the bag to grab underneath it. And that's one side right there. And this is how it's looking after. You could see I taped up the whole area around it. Doesn't have to be the whole car, but just the main spots around the car, around the spot you're gonna be painting around. Realistically, we are outside, so it's probably gonna be some type of paint that's gonna be blown around from the wind and hit other panels, but let's at least try to do our best to negate it and have most of the paint focus right in this area. Okay, and we also moved under the tree just to get a little bit of shade. It's usually not too good to be painting directly under sunlight. The paint can end up drying too fast and it could have all this oxidation in the paint and all these different things. So if you can, try to get under shade as well. But now the next thing that we're gonna do is just put on some gray primer. You don't have to do this if your paint isn't looking too beat up. But with mine, as you can see, there's a lot of imperfections in there. And let's say if I just tried to paint over it with it looking like that, it's still gonna look kind of bad. But primer is just gonna give it one even surface to paint over. So we're gonna do two coats of that and then get on to the rest. And in general, when you're spray painting, you usually have two options. You can either paint from afar and then do slow strokes so that you can still get thick painting coming out. But the thing is, if you do that, then we're outside, the paint's just gonna be blowing all over the place. If you're outside, the better way to do it is just go closer up, but then do faster strokes. If you're not fast enough, then it can end up running, so you wanna try to do it quickly. This is how the first coating came out. I'm gonna be doing another coat of this, but generally the first coat, you want it to cover most of the areas. As you could see, you can't really see any of the imperfections underneath anymore, which is good. But we're gonna be doing one more coat after that. This one's gonna be a little bit thicker. Again, just to do a good level surface when we're doing our single stage paint. Okay, and this is how it's looking after that second coat. As you can see, most of the imperfections are already gone. This is gonna get a good foundation for the rest of the paint we're doing going forward. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're not just gonna jump right into doing the next stage of paint. First, we're gonna sand it down. It's not gonna be as heavy as the sand as before. This is just to make a little bit of scratches to make sure that the paint can stick to the panel. And then of course, we're just gonna dry it off after. We're not about to go painting over some wet surface. And now it's finally time after all that preparation for spraying the paint out. We're basically gonna be following the same things that we just talked about when I was talking about putting down the primer. Just wanna make sure that you're doing it up close and then quick strokes with it, overlapping with each one. We're gonna be aiming to try to do two coats with this, like two medium to thick coats. We'll see how it turns out.
Okay, so some bad news. I thought I was recording on the first time I was passing over everything, but it looks like I wasn't, so you're only gonna be able to see the second pass around. But this is how things are looking now. It's looking a lot better. I'll put up a quick before and after of what it was looking like before compared to what it's like now. We're gonna take off all the tape and see how everything is matching up. Okay, so now a couple of things. First of all, to be honest, it would have been nice if I had a different color. As for silver, it's kind of hard to see the real gloss of the paint. Regardless, it looks better than it did before, but it's it's hard to really see how much is glossing on camera. Even when I tried taking it into the sun, it wasn't much better. And this is going to be something for you guys to learn from as well. As you can see, the paint is basically two different shades of colors. And that's because the paint that's on here is really the new paint, how the car first was when it first came out. The paint below is how the paint generally ends up becoming after the sun ends up beating down on it. Which is crazy, right? How much of a difference in paint it is. Now, usually if I was doing any other car, I would actually bring the car over to the shop so that the shop could see not only the paint code, but also they'd match the old paint with the new paint they're going to be giving you. With this car, it has a clogged cat, so I really don't want to drive it too much. And honestly, regardless of how it's going to come out, it was going to be looking better than it did before. So it is what it is. But just for you guys, if you are going to be doing this on a whole panel like that, make sure you're actually going to be going there with the vehicle to show the people that's going to be giving you the paint what the old paint still looks like. And if you haven't followed this channel before, I got this car from an auction. I'm going to be selling it pretty soon. I did want to just quickly make this video touching up that back panel before I ended up selling it. But I got it from a dealer only auction. I go to dealer only auctions a lot in this channel. It's a big way that I'm able to find my cars to flip quickly. But as you can see here, it's not like I have a whole dealership that I'm working out of so if you want to see how you could get cars like this for really cheap from dealer only auctions without having your own dealership i put together a whole video training explaining exactly that all you have to do to get access to it is go to the link in the description put on your email and it'll get sent to you if you like this video i could do more videos in the future over different things that you can do to get your car looking a lot better before you sell it yourself or if you just want to keep it for your own good too but to be ready for that just make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell and all right, guys, that's everything. Till next time.